Welcome! This is what this video is about. A faster look this time around at recreating, revisiting, a acoustic drop tile ceiling material in Blender. This is a procedural material, and if you're not used to building procedural materials, you know it can take quite some time. I'd made a first video, and along with you, although it's unpublished, we wrangled our way through all of these nodes and came up with what I think is a half decent, better than half decent, acoustic tile with lighting fixtures. And the good news about the lighting fixtures is that they could appear at different frequencies and all of the lights have, you can see, these little frames going around the lighted emission material. It's all procedural and that means also that it fits on any kind of weird shape. And I certainly put that to the test by expanding out polygons and sides. And it goes onto a two-dimensional image. And that's very important because it utilizes the brick texture, which you can see right here. And the brick texture operates through the Z axis. That means you can only use it across the X and the Y unless you map your object with UV mapping. So this all goes into a version one for something that I would like to consider. <laughs> version one, version point one, pardon me. And it's called basically like the card. When we make procedural materials, we have these little pieces of information. So the next person in line, they know what kind of object the procedural material is best suited for. They know what version you made it in. They know the scale that you intended. And this scale is indeed one Blender unit to one meter, which is Blender's standard. And they also know if they have to map their object or not with UV wrapping. So this is my first shot at it. And if it sounds like something that's interesting, you want to know more about, this might be the video for you. Get ready. Hello. Hi. Hola. Handle and greeting. Blender 2.79. Important to know because some of these things won't work in Blender 2.8 and some will. Layer 2 is where we're going to begin and here in my big window I'm going to press Shift F3 and turn it into the Node Editor window. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit to the left and this a little bit down and press Shift F5. And I've turned my outliner into the 3D view. I'm now going to shift A and create a plane. That's it. This is going to be the ceiling. Now, as you know from the introduction, I've already done this, but I wanted to do it for you in a faster way. So I'm going to apply a material and I'm going to call it acoustic drop ceiling. Be naming things correctly this time around. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't last time, but it's good practice for you to do the same. You don't even have to spell it right if you want to, but just give it a name. So our default begins with diffuse and material output. We can certainly build upon that. I already know that I would like to turn this the other way around. So shift and space helps me get this big. And so does control and up arrow, letter T, and uh, the letter N, and the letter N in tab edit mode allows me to see which direction the normals are facing. This has just one normal, but the shading and UVs tab on the toolbar over here lets me flip direction, and now it points downward. It's going to be a ceiling, so downward makes sense. Tab out of edit mode, and then T and N. Shift, space, or whatever you like, just to get it back to normal. This only matters at the end of things. Before we begin, please make sure that you have your Node Wrangler enabled, and that is found under File User Preferences, Add-ons, Node as a search. What comes up is Node Regular. Make sure it's checked. I'll be doing some things that uh, require that. So Shift A will add a node, and the texture we're going to be using, which has saved my life a whole bunch, is the brick texture. The brick texture crosses through the X and Y axis. It is projected 
well, I shouldn't say through, but it's projected up and down the Z axis. So if you put this onto an object that has a Z measurement there, as well as an X and Y, you can see it shooting through space. Well, we don't want to apply this to anything really except maybe a two-dimensional object like a plane. And for that reason, I've made sure everybody understands this is best suited for a plane, for two-dimensional objects. Use mapping if you wanted something to go sideways, but it's, uh, you know, as it's found in nature, the brick texture goes this way across the X and Y. A lot of good Blender users say that the scale makes no sense. The scale is lying until we set the height and width to 1. Now the scale makes a little bit more sense. You see the scale is 5. Well right now if I make sure brick texture is selected and use Control T to get the default coordinates for that node, it's coming from generated coordinates. Generated coordinates pay attention to the bounding box of an object. Object coordinates pay attention to Blender units and the world around the object. I'm going to change my frequency to 1 and I don't need any offset. Now if we look at what one Blender unit contains, you can see one Blender unit contains five bricks by five bricks. This is a plane that measures two by two Blender units. So now the bricks scale makes a little more sense. I want to assume that one Blender unit is one meter. And if I need to change that, I can do that in the Scene tab using Unit Presets. The default is understood to be 1 meter, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is without changing anything explicitly. And I think I decided I want 1 meter to have 1.5 acoustic tiles. The color is something we can change. Perhaps you've toyed with brick and moved the bias from 1 to negative 1. 0 is the value in between those two. A bias of 1 throws you all the way to whatever color is in the color 1 slot. A bias, I hope I just said negative 1, a bias of positive 1 throws you to the color that's in color 2. So 0 is right in between, and the closer you get to one extreme or the other, it's not a smooth gradation. It sort of introduces that weird brick randomness. That randomness shoots through the Z. So you have to slide the brick texture along the X and Y to get any sort of change in the randomness of that brick shading appearance. For this, I left clicked and dragged over the X and Y value for location. And now I'm just sliding the mouse and it affects both those values. A right click returns those back to the zero. I'm going to just shove the bias to negative one, but I'm going to change the color of white. And I already know that a 0.84 value is the same as getting into this, dragging across all three and putting in 0.84. Now I've got the color and the position of everything just right. I'm going to get rid of the sky texture, so I am going to just make it a basic color for the background, and I'm also going to lower its value, because we want lights to appear. Now, before I put those lights in, in edit mode, I can press S and scale it up. And because we've chosen, I'm scaling it up three times, by the way, so three times means there are six meters along each side. Because we chose object as the texture coordinate, our acoustic drop ceiling tile have stayed in place. Good. Let's put in some lights. And that means that we're going to have to mix in an emission shader to make that happen. Shift D will make a duplicate of this node, which is the diffuse shader node. Shift D again and drop it over the connection. Shift S will let you switch a node's type. Change the diffuse shader to a mix shader. Now shave. Now shave this one, 
to an emission shader. Shave, chain, change a shader. And then come up with a tongue twister. Put the number five in its value. Now what we have to do is determine how does Blender factor between the diffuse shader and the emission shader. We need to put something into that socket. It's going to come a lot like this. Another brick texture, Shift D and Y to constrain it up and down if you wish, will share a lot of the settings up on top and also the mapping so that it's sort of calibrated to be the same. It's the color that will jump in and already the color is making sure the diffuse is black and the emission is white because the emission is controlled by the higher values. The higher values push a mix to the second option. Hope that made sense. I didn't say that very well. What I learned but didn't know beforehand last time was I can put a number in that's higher than one. When I do that, it's the space in between the bricks that has to grow. Right now, the mortar size is 0 0.02. If we click and drag, we get stopped at 0.125. But if I just type in the number one, already our lighted boxes look like they're kind of where they're beginning to belong. So now control in the mouse wheel, I'm still stuck. <laughs> 1.25 is what I'd ended up with, and it's mortar smoothing that should come down and makes a nice tight square of light inside the square that represents that popcorn covered acoustic tile. Hey, I don't see any popcorn. What's in charge of that? The popcorn is a feature that can go into the normal because I don't want to use it as a color, I want it to affect the lighting. So, I always make a mess of these things. I'm just going to pull these out to make myself uh, make some breathing room for myself. And now, of course, of course, it's going to be a texture. And I've been using Moose Grave just for fun. I'll put the color into normal and it doesn't work well because we have to use a bump vector node in between the two. And then still doesn't work well because although I've dropped it on top of that little connector, it accidentally falls into the normal socket instead of the height socket. And I will push the value of this Musgrave texture scale to 200. Just to make absolutely sure that everything is explicitly controlled, I will control T and make sure it's an object texture coordinate that is informing the Musgrave texture. Weirdly, for this scale, I decided dot four six four was the way to go for the strength of that bump. We don't see it well on the bottom because there's no light being cast upward. I'm going to now create a point light by changing the sunlight. Alt G, Alt R, allow me to clear the rotation and any grabbing or moving. I'm going to lower it with GZ, change it to a point, increase its power to 100, and now Shift Z to render. It looks as though something is down there casting light. It could easily be a table lamp or a table lamp. Yeah, I wanted a frame around those lights, man. That would prove to be a little trickier. What I know now is you should make a copy of that value node. Take the 1.25 value and plug it in to mortar size. We're going to make another brick texture. Shift D and Y, put her there. And now connect this to the mortar size again. Shift A, Converter, Math. We're going to multiply it and use just a percentage. So multiply by 0.95. It's working already, except how do we get it to show up? It's a thing that belongs with the diffuse texture. 
Let's begin naming these because we have three identical nodes that do three different things. The letter N with a node selected will expose an option to create a label. This, where I am, so I'm trying to get this thing to open up a little bit more, but it won't. I'm sure it will. It did. The node I have selected now, the first brick texture, was for making the diffuse texture. And then this top one, the second one, was for making the emit texture. And now this is going to be making the light frame. Those labels show up at the top of the nodes. Now when you need to change something, it's a little bit less confusing which does what. I did say we need to mix it in. That should tell you immediately that we're talking about mixing in color, RGB, before the color of the tile hits the color shader or the diffuse shader. What we'll do is use the light frame node as a factor. So the color will inform the factor. I want the color to not be 0.5. It shouldn't be 0.84. I'd like it to be half of that, 0.42. Now with its vector added, it shows up. Were you nervous? I could certainly change this color to something darker, making it more pronounced. But for me, that was really all I needed to see. And removing the normal socket shows me that I essentially have the colors that I need to have. It's simple, but it's successful. So the next step is to create more depth and get this texture off of the frame of the light. I know now I'm going to need access to this stuff over here because what I'm aiming for is to work on the node connector between these two. Right now, our only source of bumpiness is coming from a Musgrave texture that affects everything. If I remove the color, it's just everywhere. The first thing we're going to do is get the bump off of the black parts. I can prove to you it's on the black parts by changing the color black to something you can see. I better leave this open. As a matter of fact, it gives me access to this weird factor thing. Shift Control left click shows me the color that's coming out once again, and it shows me the factor. It shows me the way in which Blender is dividing those colors. It doesn't matter what color, it doesn't matter what the bias is, it simply shows me the difference between the brick and the mortar. So this is kind of useful for our next step put back the regular view and then grab mix RGB. I want that factor to control the difference between where the moose grave is coming in to the first socket and something in the second socket. A smooth non-texture. 0.755 just happens to be where it all ended up just now. That's great! it's already off the separation between the tile and the grid that holds it up in the air. Let's do it again. Get it off the light. So we can fold that up. We've learned a big lesson. A will deselect all nodes. C will allow you to circle select whatever goes under your mouse with the right click, uh, with the left click. Right click, turn that off, and then drag them where you want. We need space. So this is going to go here. A Shift D copy of it is going to go here. Control H, borrow the factor. And now switch it. Shift D once again. Get his little brothers down a bit. I like, I do like trying to make it pretty. And then the make emit node was the top of those brick ones. Use its factor and switch the nodes if everything has gone blank. And now what we've done with that last one was ensure that if the lights are off, there's a difference here between the emit square and the frame square. You can see it 
when I do this, but you can see it better when you make the color darker. One feature that I changed, which gave me a good result, was actually making a little smoothness to the light itself. A 0.01 gave me a little bit of an edge here. There's a little bit of a shadow, like a beveled edge around where the lamp cover would be for that light. You make it too strong and it becomes a giant light, a, a giant light glow. I thought the color of the lights might use some improvement. And what I did was added, of course, a noise texture, just as simple as you please, connected it to the color of the lights, and then used a mix RGB to add a yellow cast or tint to those. Finally, into the diffuse, I had decided I wanted people to know when it was upside down. So I used a color that mixed in, and it was a color that was like an alarming color. Isn't that cool how we already had the shadows from around the light just by using bump like that? We're so good. This was gonna be a mix of colors. One, what we expect, and the other, kind of an alarming orange red, but that was only gonna happen when someone was using the wrong side of a plane. The wrong side of a plane would be called back facing. So now, in our example, the correct side to use looks fine. The wrong side to use looks black. <laughs> because, there's, because there's no atmosphere. It's gonna be okay, everybody. Uh, it looks orange. So if someone tries to use this on the wrong side of a normal, they would know immediately, and they would simply turn it over, which is one of the first things that you and I did when we started this project. We flipped the normal. So what do you think of that? We were able to make this together. That is the end of what we're doing. I wanted to make it faster this time than it had gone for me the first time. I hope that you got something out of that. I always appreciate your likes and comments, and really, you guys have been so generous. It's inspired me to get back on the microphone and do it all again with new projects and new ideas. So some things will be simple like this, and other things will be quite complicated and a little droll, a little boring. But artistic creation requires that we know so much about so much. So for now, give it a like. Give me a subscribe if you're in the mood. I don't know. YouTube has inserted some bell. Do whatever you want. Bells and whistles. I accidentally left my mortar dar uh, too light for my taste. There we go. That's a little darker. Control H. And I knew it was this one because it says make diffuse. That's real handy. Anyway, gosh, that is fun. Thanks for watching.